I'm Paul Wedgwood, I'm the CEO of Splash Damage and the Game Director on Brink, and you're watching Platform 32. At this year's Eurogamer Expo, there were tons of unreleased games on show for the public to have a bash on. One of the games which drew the biggest crowds and created the longest queues was Brink, a first-person shooter from Splash Damage and Bethesda that is trying to break the shooter mould and revolutionise the FPS genre. But come on, they all say that, don't they? In one of the few quiet moments of the expo, when we weren't running around playing games, we managed to grab an exclusive interview with the CEO of Splash Damage and Brink's game director, Paul Wedgwood. So, come on Paul, why are people getting so excited? What's Brink all about and why is it going to be so awesome? Brink, you know, it's a, a brand new shooter from Splash Damage and I think we're probably best known, certainly on the PC, for our work on games like Wolfenstein, Enemy Territory, Enemy Territory Quake Wars and our contributions to Doom 3 with uh, id Software. But Brink is a brand new title, it's a brand new universe, the game takes place in 2045 but at its heart it's absolutely a shooter, it's about running and shooting at other people, be they players or AI. As far as the game is concerned, because we'd made shooters for such a long time beforehand, the first thing we really wanted to improve was the movement system. You know, shooters have for a long time suffered from these kind of, you know, artificial constraints. Like, you know, if you walk up to a table, you get stuck on it, when in real life you would just step over it, or you'd run up and over a chair, or you'd slide under a table if you're in combat, or climb over a three-foot wall. And in shooters, you're typically unable to do that unless the level designers put the right entity there and made it, you know, given you permission. And we wanted to do away with all of those artificial and frustrating constraints. So we created a new system that's called SMART. And SMART stands for smooth movement across random terrain. And the idea is really straightforward. When you hold your SMART button down, it allows you to vault and mantle and slide and step up and jump up onto surfaces, to, to climb up over containers, to jump between small gaps. And really it's about, as, as its you know, technical designer Orby Hesselgren says in our videos, it's about movement and shooting simultaneously. It's all procedural, there are no canned animations that take over control from you or anything, but it means that having removed all of those constraints, you can now focus on the job at hand, which is usually shooting at moving targets. Smart certainly sounds like a great inclusion to the game and a natural progression to the way FPS games are controlled. In fact, I don't know why it hasn't been done before. I mean, the amount of times I've been caught up on door frames or died while trying to clumsily climb over an object in FPS games is ridiculous. Was this type of situation the inspiration behind Smart and how did you go around developing it? You know, I'm a, a somewhat chubby, uh, you know, 14, maybe 15 stone guy, but I reckon I could still get uh, you know, over a three foot wall. I bet you I could get over it if I was being shot at at the time. And yet as a super soldier in a video game, I'm defeated by this kind of tactic all the time. It really, really frustrated me. So I wanted a system that was going to give us a kind of greater level of movement, but we hired a brilliant guy called Richard Hamm. Richard Hamm was a lead game designer on Fable 2, and he had this idea that the button shouldn't be like skill based, where I have to hit it at exactly the right time on exactly the right pixel to make exactly the right jump because ultimately in a shooter you can't see your feet and we'd just be punishing you you know for a bad interface so what he developed was this notion of having a smart button that doubled up as your sprint button if you're sprinting you're already not planning on shooting right at that second and if you're looking up in the air as you run towards a container you probably want to climb unless you're intending on slamming into it face first for the fun of it you probably wanted to climb up over it or jump the gap or slide into cover or whatever else but it doesn't really feel intrusive the next thing we did we hired a great guy called Aubrey Hesselgren he's our uh, technical designer and he was a parkour enthusiast himself so he strapped a head camera on and started running around his parents farm jumping off 15 foot high walls beating up his dad skulking around the basement of our office and pretending to plant heavy explosive charges and recording like his hand positions and movement and stuff and so we just really got started on a prototype and when it came together one of the things that really surprised us was not just how compelling it was to play a shooter that way but how frustrating it was to play our past shooters now that we couldn't do the things that we can do in Brink. Another FPS game which features parkour style movement is Mirror's Edge which looked great but was a bit fiddly to control and due to this received mediocre reviews. How does Brink's smart system compare? Better or worse? Better or worse? 
I think probably the system that we've implemented, although it's a completely different genre, is most closely matched to something like Assassin's Creed 2, where the idea is one of freedom of movement, of being able to get from here to there and doing the things that you could do intuitively in real life. You don't have to think about where your legs and arms are when you're climbing over a chair or a table and work out the steps to involve it. So it's counterintuitive to make you hit X, then Y, then Z, then push up, then push down on your trigger. But you do want to be able to control where you're looking the entire time. So that's the system that we've implemented in Brink. Ah, definitely better then. Sweet! Visually, Brink stands out amongst other games of its genre thanks to its bright visuals and unique character design, creating a cool, gritty comic book style. What's the story behind the look and atmosphere of the game? So the vision in my head was one of complete realism, you know, that we'd build this huge floating city and it would be entirely realistic and that would be the, the, its function. Then we hired this great art director, his name's Olivier Leonardi. He was the art director behind uh, Prince of Persia, Rainbow Six Vegas. And the very first thing he said is this should be stylistic, this should be hyper-realistic. I want to exaggerate all the proportions on characters and I want to put the colour back in shooters. And I was like, you're insane, you know, because the whole industry has been making shooters in sepia for 10 years. You know, that's what we do. If you want something to be realistic, we desaturate it. If we wanted to make a shooter compelling, it would be in a Siberian base or a North African airfield or on a, you know, an aircraft carrier in the middle of the Atlantic. And that was the limit of what we did. But you know, the reason that I was compelled by the setting when I started to think about where a great place to put a game would be is that you know, I haven't seen floating cities in games or movies, obviously ones that float in the sky, but not the idea of a green, sustainable floating city at sea. Because this is a world you've never seen before, Olivier reasoned that players don't have any expectations when they arrive, so we can play with things a little bit. We can use the environment as a kind of big, major third character to tell a backstory about the game. And so Olivier pushed hard for this, uh, this art direction, and uh, he started doing, you know, working with his team, People like Tim Appleby, our lead character artist, who was responsible for Shepard and the lead aliens in Mass Effect, and people like Aaron Hoffman, our lead uh, uh, environment artist, and our concept artist, Laurel and Georgi, they started all working together to come up with a vision for the game that would really set it aside from everything else that would create something that was really cool. With your fresh take on the visuals and the control scheme, have you done anything to reinvent the gameplay of Brink? The next big thing for us was really starting to blur the lines between single player and multiplayer gaming. We wanted to have a game where you could make a seamless transition from playing on your own to playing cooperatively with your friends to perhaps playing in full versus mode against strangers but it just be one game where you're advancing your same persistent in-game character. So as you're playing, you earn experience points for all of the cool things you do and mostly we bribe you for making the game fun for other people by doing stuff for them and then you get to use those experience points for cool outfits, cool unlockables like weapon upgrades and modifi modifications, uh, cool abilities, tools, items and gadgets that make the game even more fun for you the longer that you play. Thanks Paul, the game sounds truly amazing. So the big question is, when can we finally get our hands on Brink in the comfort of our own homes? Brink is scheduled for release on the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 and uh, PC of course in spring 2011. So I've just interviewed Paul Wedgwood and I really, really want to play Brink now. But if you look over there, there's like a two hour queue to play it. I'm from Platform 32, I'm press, I should be able to play it right now. So, you know, I'm just going to skip the barrier. What's the worst that can happen, eh? Uh, so if I hand the microphone to my camera up, Bruce there. Thank you, Bruce. Well, 
Well, you'll be pleased to know that after a wait of approximately two hours and eight minutes, I finally got to try the game and tested out the smart system for myself in a team objective match. And to be honest, it worked amazingly well. Holding down the smart button and running at obstacles only to vault over them automatically not only feels instinctive and creates a great flow to the game, but it also looks cool as hell. Jumping over a high wall and landing down behind your opponent before popping him in the head is so smooth and easy that every kill makes you feel like an awesome acrobatic tough guy. Parkour blimey Brink is gonna be an immense game. After our interview with Paul, he ran straight up a nine foot wall, shimmied across a drain pipe and legged it off into the darkness, presumably on his way back to the splash damage offices to finish off making the game. But before he left, he kindly signed this Brink t-shirt for us and now you have the chance to win it. Just answer this simple question. How much does Paul Wedgwood weigh? A. 13, maybe 14 stone. B. 14, maybe 15 stone. Or C. 15, maybe 16 stone. Send your answers to p32comp at hotmail.co.uk and the winner will be picked and announced on our Facebook page on Monday the 22nd of November at 6pm GMT. Good luck! Mm -hmm.